Good morning. It is uh, Wednesday, September 30th, last day of September. And uh, my name is Larry Cedar, and I'm back here with you for another session on scanning, S-Q-A-N-N-I-N-G, a relaxation technique which utilizes the incremental release of muscular tension to achieve a deep state of physical, emotional, and mental calm. We're just here to practice. Um, if you've been here before, I'm basically going to go over the same uh, basic technique, but just practice. Just practice. Uh, practice makes perfect, as they say. This is a technique which definitely um, improves with practice. What I call scanning, this incremental release of muscular tension. It's something that as you get more, more familiar with, you begin to be able to more readily induce. And that helps you uh, get yourself out of, shall we say, trouble when you're uh, overly contracted. So uh, uh, this is our post-debate session. <laughs> For those of you who are, are left um, a bit stressed, um, uh, this is perhaps a way to alleviate some of that stress. So, we're joined by my neighbor's dogs this morning who also want to um, scan. So scanning, the incremental release of muscular tension to achieve, a, to achieve a deep state of physical, emotional, and mental calm. It's based on a concept, a very simple concept, that the universe is made up of two basic processes, contraction, squeeze your hands together, and expansion, release. That's it. And you can gauge your, your state of consciousness, your state of being, your state of mind, your emotional state, your physical state, um, on whether it is uh, either more contracted or expanded, where you fall on that scale. Because we vacillate all day, every day of our lives, we vacillate between the state of more contraction and more expansion. This is what we do. You can look at your life, any moment of your life, any second of your life, and say, am I in a more contracted state or a more expanded state? And I like to quote the source of this concept, and that's a man named Thaddeus Golas, G-O-L-A-S, who wrote a book called The Lazy Man's Guide to Enlightenment, and he talks about this basic, basic process of the universe. So in life, we tend to be more contracted. The very state of being, the very, the very fact that we are human beings is that we are in a contracted state. We, are, we have been brought together. Materials in the universe have been brought together to create this, ourselves, our human body, our minds, our thoughts. These are all contractions, the bringing together of these materials to have a, a, a being, to exist, to function, to achieve. And uh, proof of this is that when you die, you expand. You basically, all of this goes away. Everything that was brought together to form this life dissipates and goes away and becomes dust or finds a way into some other thing. You know, those who believe in reincarnation would simply say that, you know, what is us, what makes us up basically dissipates when we die and reforms somewhere else and comes back perhaps as another human being, who knows. But that's it. So it's a very simple way of looking at life. Am I contracted or am I expanded or am I somewhere in between? Generally speaking, my experience has shown, and I think Thaddeus Golas would agree with this, that when you are overly contracted, you feel bad and if you can move yourself into a more expanded state, you will feel better. So if we get up every day in our life and we say, how do I feel? I feel bad, I feel good. If you feel bad and you wanna feel better, you can scan, you can expand. So how do we expand? Well, the muscles are the perfect metaphor for this expansion process because muscles can either contract or release. Contract, clench, release. They can either do one of two things. They can't do both at the same time. They can either contract or expand. So if you want to move yourself into a more expanded state, rather than trying to think yourself into a more expanded state, and we're all doing plenty of thinking these days, which can be a form of contraction in itself. You can't contract yourself out of, con out of a contraction problem. We can use the muscles as a guide. We can use the muscles as a way to induce a state of expansion within our very being. You know, people say, think or feel, think or feel. Should I think my way out of a problem or should I feel my way out of a problem? Well, this is a physical way to m remove yourself out of a contracted state. And it's simple because we use our muscles. We know how to contract and expand. We just have to extend that ability into our entire body. We're used to contracting the muscles of our hands, our face, our arms if we're lifting weights. There's, there's all kinds of ways to contract. We're not as good as it, at, at, at expanding. That's why we feel the need to go to masseuses and chiropractors and, and, and drink alcohol and smoke you know, uh, joints and, and take pills because we're not as good at expanding, at letting go of that tension, that contraction. So scanning is the practice of incrementally releasing muscular tension the theory being that as you release muscular tension, this infuses your very sense, your very existence with a more expanded kind of condition. This influences your emotions and your mind. Your mind is a muscle of sorts because it holds on to things. It holds on to thoughts, obsessive thoughts, anxieties, things like that.
some good things, some bad. But when you relax your body, your mind also relaxes, allowing those thoughts to freely float away and leave you in a more calm, centered, still, joyful state. And that's what we're trying to achieve. So this is how we do it. Start by squeezing your hands together. And that's simply to show you that you can control your own state of consciousness. You can either contract or expand. So when you squeeze your hands together, you're making a choice to contract. Any muscle you use, any thought you form, any words you form are a contraction. But in this case, we're using a physical example of contraction. And we're using the hands as a metaphor, what I call a binary metaphor, because not only can we contract, but three, two, one, release, we can expand. So we're already setting up this basic understanding that we are in control of our own state of consciousness. We can move ourselves at any time from a state of contraction, squeeze your hands together, to a state of three, two, one, release, expansion. And that's just a way of reminding you because we tend to feel in life out of control, like things are happening to us, life is happening, we're reacting. It's just this sort of spinning out of control sort of situation. And we find ourselves in an overly contracted, panicked, anxious, obsessive state. Things aren't working, we're frozen, we're locked in. We, we feel limited in our choices. We don't know how to get out of it. So instinctively we go for a beer or a joint or a pill or a masseuse. We, we feel as though we need help when in fact we have the power within ourselves at any given moment to change our state of consciousness. And this is a representation of that. Squeeze your hands together, three, two, one, release. So that's all we're doing. Reminding ourselves that we can contract or expand. Contract or expand. So now I want you to squeeze your hands together and we're gonna hold it for a good 30 seconds. And as tight as you can, like really tight. And we're gonna to continue to talk while we do that, but keep your hands tight. So we try in life. We get up in the morning and we try, we begin. We begin to work, we begin to try to get our lives together, to achieve our goals. We try, we try, we contract, we contract. Formation of words, thoughts, ideas, we build things, we make things happen, we develop plans, we contract. This is what we do all day long. We're really good at that, that's what we're trained to do. It's what we're familiar with, it's our go-to solution. So this is us. So now it's been about 15 seconds, so continue to hold. So what happens in life is, when we continue to contract and contract and contract, there's a point of diminishing returns. And at some point you feel overly contracted and you start to feel bad. Why? Because you're limited. You've built a cage around yourself. You're anxious. You're obsessive. You're thinking of things you can't seem to let go of. You, you don't know how to get yourself out of this mess. And you're stuck. So what do we do? Well, so I better contract some more. Contraction is the solution. So we squeeze harder. And that gets us into more trouble. So we have solutions, but one of them is just to decide to stop contracting. Remember, keep squeezing. You can only contract or expand. You can't do both at the same time. So we're gonna stop contracting now, and we're gonna make a decision to expand. Three, two, one, release. Now see how that feels different. I always immediately feel an instinct to take a deep breath when I expand because you're basically sending a message to your body. It's time to stop contracting and start expanding. So now I want you to take three deep breaths. Breaths are by definition expansive. You're filling your lungs with air. So it's again, moving ourselves away from a state of contraction into a state of expansion. So here we go, three deep breaths. Deep as you can. Now sit for 15 seconds in stillness and silence. And that means absolute stillness. Don't move a muscle, but continue to breathe. So we've built a demarcation is what we've just done, a dividing line. If you were overly contracted, if you were contracting, if you were thinking, 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 acting, 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 clutching, clenching, worrying, we've made a dividing line. We've said we're now going to stop contracting, we're going to break that cycle, break that habit, which it is, and we're going to begin to work towards expansion. And how do we do that? First, we indicated to ourselves that we have the ability to do that. Three, two, one, release. We noted the difference in how it feels to be slightly expanded versus contraction. It's really important that you recognize the difference in feeling, the physical sensations of expansion versus the physical sensations of contraction. It's really important that you recognize the difference. We're studying that so that we can replicate it on demand so that whenever we choose in the future, we can more readily expand. We know what it feels like. Then we take three deep breaths, which are also expansive by nature. So this time we're gonna take five. Here we go. The 
we're going to sit for 15 seconds in absolute stillness and silence. Continue to breathe. Make that 30 seconds. Deep breath. So again, we've just built the demarcation. We've said we're going to stop contracting and we're now going to begin expanding. Now, the reason we sit in absolute stillness is because stillness, absolute stillness, and I don't mean just sitting kind of comfortably moving around. I mean frozen. Is a strong choice. It's a definitive choice that you're making to not move. And that sends a signal to your body. That sends a signal to your body that something is about to change. We're going to stop what we were doing, completely stop. And your body takes note of that. It just calls it to attention and it says something is about to change. And we sit in absolute silence because if words and thoughts are contractions, the bringing together of words and thoughts to form ideas... When we silence ourselves, even if your mind is still going, that's okay. But if you make a conscious decision to not think, even if you do, you've sent again a signal to your body that we are now going to stop contracting and we're going to begin moving into a direction of expansion. So these are what I call the preliminary steps, the preliminary expansive steps. And if you've been in a contracted state, you tend to want to stay there. You tend to lock in. It feels safe. Even if it feels bad, it feels familiar. We have habits. We do certain things that we go to, even if we sense instinctively they're not good for us, we'll do them because we're scared. We don't know what else to do. We're under stress, so we will do this. We will think obsessively. We will take some action of certain, a certain kind that we always do, and we'll lock into that. It's familiar, it's secure, it's safe, even if it's not good for us. So we use these preliminary expansive steps to sort of shock ourselves out of that contraction, to bring ourselves out through decisive steps, contraction, expansion, deep breaths, stillness, and silence. And you could do that a few times. You know, you could do that, just do that. If you did nothing more than that, that's enough of, of scanning to kind of move you into a more expanded state. And I already have begun to feel the change just from doing those steps. And, and, and I start these sessions usually in a pretty contracted state. If you're human these days and you're watching the news, you're contracted because you're reacting, you're thinking, you're scared. Everyone's very anxious about what's going to happen, let's say with the election or whatever. You're rooting for your team, whatever. You're very contracted. So even though I know it's not good for me, I will move into those contracted patterns. So when I take these initial steps, which we're going to do once more, it shocks you out of that. It brings you out of it. It breaks the cycle. It sets up a demarcation. We're stopping this and we're moving into this. It's a way to kind of get started. And I always say if you have time for nothing else and you want to do some scanning and you don't have time to do the muscular release, which we're going to do next, just do these preliminary steps. Squeeze your hands together and say, that's me. I'm going to let go. Take deep breaths and let's do it now. Five more deep breaths. <sighs> One last big deep breath, followed by 30 seconds of absolute stillness and complete silence, but continue to breathe. Deep breath. And if you get dizzy, that's okay. You know, it can be very disorienting moving out of a contracted state. It's like um, you've been in a cave and you're coming out into the sunlight and you can sort of be blinded or disoriented. We're changing states of consciousness kind of dramatically, kind of quickly. 
Um, so it can feel strange. You can feel dizzy. You can feel uncomfortable. You can feel like, I don't like this. This doesn't feel good. I was in a safe, comfortable, contracted place, and now I'm being exposed. All those feelings can come up, and that's, a, that's natural. You know, feelings are, are suppressed when you're contracted. And so as you begin to expand, you do feel emotions that you aren't necessarily prepared to feel. So all kinds of feelings can come up, and that's fine. Let that happen. That's good. You're emerging. You're expanding. And I stop and I take a moment because I always begin to recognize instinctively as I begin this process, as I begin to move my body into a more expanded state, that silence is beautiful. I mean, talking is great, but silence is beautiful. Because in silence, you make room, you make space for possibility. One of the problems with being contracted is we limit our choices. We think the world is just this. It's just this. You don't want to think about anything else, so you feel limited, you feel trapped. And as you begin to expand, and silence is a form of expansion, you allow for possibilities. You see that there's more than one way to go. I may be worried and I may have thought this was my only choice and this was my only choice. I only have two choices or maybe even one choice and I'd be freaking out and frantic about that. And as you expand, you go, oh no, wait, there's a whole world out there. When you shut yourself up, when you become silent, you can actually hear and see what's going on in the world and you begin to recognize that you do have options. And so you're not so scared. So you can let go, you can release. Stillness, silence, allow for possibility. You've created a blank canvas. Whereas before you had filled it up with all sorts of brush strokes that you thought was the only way to go and there was no space available for anything else. You've cleared the canvas, you've swept it clean. Now anything's possible and that's very calming. I have options. My life isn't just this. It's that or that, maybe that, maybe that over there. Who knows? So that's some of the feelings I have when I begin to expand. So now we go into what I call the nuts and bolts of the technique, and that's the actual incremental release of muscular tension. Because to truly expand, you want to get rid of any pockets of contraction within you. So scanning, as I call it, the incremental release of muscular tension, is a way of searching through your body for pockets of contraction or muscular tension, releasing those pockets of tension, and even further inducing this deep state of expansion, which in turn influences your emotions and your mind. As I said, the mind is a muscle. As it begin to, begins to relax, it lets go, and all the negative thoughts and obsessive feelings begin to float away, and you're left in a place of neutrality, stillness, silence, calm, and joy. So let's begin. We know how to do this. Make a fist, and we know how to release. We use our hands all the time. We're very familiar with letting go, contracting, expansion. We're not as familiar with doing that on demand in the rest of our body. But we're going to start with the areas that we are most familiar with so that we can, we can sort of graduate into this process. So we use our face a lot. Make a face. Relax. These are muscles we use all the time. So what I call the zones, muscular zones, I divide into eight zones. We call the first one the face because it's most familiar. So on my count... I want you to consciously release the tension in the muscles of your face. Incrementally, a small amount, it doesn't matter how small, 1%. But what's important is not how much, but that you feel the change. You feel these muscles go from a state of contraction into a state of expansion. So you ready? Three, two, one, release. And if you're in a room with a mirror, you can actually see the change in your face. You go from this to this, you let go of the muscular tension, your, your muscles go slack, they sort of slouch. It's as if there was a, a power switch and the muscles were being used somehow and so there was energy being expended to exercise and use those muscles and you turned off the power, three, two, one, off. And when the power is turned off, the muscles just let go and relax. That's the sensation you're looking for. This is what the practice of scanning will familiarize you with you will become better and better at this simple process of turning off the power to a muscle group and that muscle will release and you will begin to feel more expanded, physically expanded, which will induce your emotions and your mind. The face, three, two, one, release. And for some people it helps to tense the muscle, consciously tense the muscle first so you can feel more of a difference between this and this. If that helps you, good. Same as making a fist and releasing. What we're looking for is to study the sensation of release. We know how to contract. We're very good at contracting. We do it all day long, even in our sleep. What we're not as good at is consciously expanding. 
So if it helps you to contract the muscle first and then let it go, do that. Otherwise, just take a, um, a starting position of wherever your musculature is at. Like right now, I feel like my face is in a fairly neutral place muscularly, but if I go three, two, one, I can let it go even further. So that's what we're looking for. Now we're gonna move through these muscle groups. This is the nuts and bolts of the technique. If you want to expand, if you want to become more relaxed, more conscious, you let go of the musculature. So we're gonna move through these muscle groups. This was group one, now we move to group two, the top of the head, three, two, one, release. Now, we've immediately moved into an area that we don't usually concentrate on. How many times a day do you release the muscles at the top of your head? Probably never. So now you're beginning to see why you have to practice because you're gonna study. You're gonna look for what that feels like. What does it feel like to release the muscles at the top of the head? And you can use visualization. I always imagine a shirt that just came out of the dryer. It's very wrinkled and it's crumpled at the top of my head. And on my count, when I say release, it's like I passed a steamer over that shirt and all the wrinkles relaxed and it went Phew, and just fell smoothly over the top of my head. So that's what's happening, this change. Top of the head, three, two, one, release. And again, if it helps to crinkle it up and then three, two, one, release. That's what you're looking for, that release. Take a deep breath. Zone three, the back of the head, three, two, one, Release. And I like to say that release is also relief. Release is relief. Because as you let go of the muscular tension, you send a signal to your body that you don't need to hold those muscles anymore. I'm giving you permission to take the rest of the day off. And that's a relief because we use energy all day long to contract our muscles. It takes energy. That's why when you work out, it takes a lot of energy. We're, we're really using them to their maximum capacity. But even the smallest amount of muscular tension requires energy. So when you say you don't have to keep that muscle contracted, when you let that go, you've alleviated your body's system of that drain on the system. You no longer have to direct energy at those muscles. So you freed up that energy. So it's a relief. You know, on a, on a, on a low subconscious level, we hold tension in our body all day. That's requiring a certain amount of energy, even if you're just sitting there. Like when you're driving. My dad used to come home from a long day of, uh, on the road because he was a salesman. And he'd be exhausted. And I'd say, why is dad so tired? My mom would say, he's been driving all day. I'd say, well, why, why is that tiring? He was just sitting. He was just sitting. I didn't understand. But as we all know, sitting in traffic can be exhausting because you're maintaining a certain level of tension. You're not moving. You're not going anywhere. But you're maintaining a certain level of attentiveness, a certain readiness. That's your muscle. Slightly contracted. Release. Slightly contracted, release. Slightly contracted, release. There's a big difference. So you're learning to find those pockets of tension. You're scanning your body, looking for those pockets of tension and consciously releasing that tension. Zone three, the back of the head. Three, two, one, release. And if you feel your body shift in some way, sometimes when I'll release the tension in one area, my shoulders will drop. That's great. Because that, that means your body is in sympathy with the area you're working on. It's joining in. And that will happen. Your body very much follows the cues of every part of itself. If the hand's doing one thing, the feet are aware of it. I mean, everything's connected. So as you begin to influence your body in this way, you might find the entire body joining in. That's fantastic. We work specifically on individual muscle groups because it's easier to focus on and concentrate on them than just saying relax the whole body. But you'll see the body's influenced by that micro work. Zone four is the neck. Three, two, one, release. Take a deep breath. <sighs> and always take breaths when you feel an impulse to take a breath. That's your body saying, oh, we're beginning to expand and it wants to join in and it wants to take the breaths that you've been depriving yourself of because you've been holding your breath. Remember, contraction is a holding position. You've also been holding your breath. So as you begin to expand and let go, you no longer need to hold your breath. You can breathe. So let that happen. Zone four, the neck. Three, two, one, release. And again, I felt my shoulders drop, which is zone five. Three, two, one, release. And begin to kind of examine how you're sitting. You may, you may be sitting and feel like I'm comfortably sitting. Then as you begin to relax, you may feel yourself go, just kind of, and you go, wow, I was kind of holding myself up. You don't need to. Slouching is permitted in scanning. Slouching is permitted and encouraged. You don't want to be holding any muscular tension anywhere in your body. If you end up slumped over at the end of the session, that's fine. You're letting go. If you've ever seen anyone go under in hypnosis, they go, 
three, two, one, and they go like this because they've just let the muscles go. That's what you want. You want that, so encourage that. Again, the shoulders, three, two, one, release. There they go. So you see, we're building momentum. We're adding layers and layers of relaxation. We've taken a collection of muscles that are tense and holding, and we're slowly, bit by bit, working our way through our entire body and letting it go. It's like we're kneading dough. If you've ever made bread, you knead the dough. We're working our way through, softening, 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 softening. And again, you may feel emotions or feelings that might make you uncomfortable as you do this process because what you're doing is opening up. Feelings are suppressed or restrained by contraction. Feelings emerge through expansion. So you may have consciously or unconsciously been holding on to certain feelings or emotions. I know we're all carrying a lot of stress these days. Did you watch the debates? So we're all carrying a lot of stress. And again, many times it's on a subliminal unconscious level. So as you begin to release and relax, those feelings may emerge. That's fine. Let that happen. You're just alone in a room by yourself. Nothing can happen. If you start to feel things, even cry, whatever, scream, yell, let those feelings emerge. That's what we're doing. We're freeing up our body. We're letting go. Shoulders. Three, two, one. Release. Deep breath. Moment of silence. Stillness. Complete stillness. And through this process, you're also reacquainting yourself with your own body. You're coming back into your body is the way I like to put it. We tend to cut ourselves off from our feelings, from our, our sensations, from our body when we are in, at stress, in a state of stress, because it's impractical to be feeling while you're trying to deal with a threatening situation. Um, you know, it's been said, and I'm not generalizing here, but it's been said that um, men have the capacity to fight a greater capacity to fight because they are more readily able to detach themselves from their emotions. They can just, you know, say, I'm not feeling anything momentarily. So they're more able to fight, to defend, to attack. than let's say women who are more instinctively in touch with their emotions, it's more difficult for them to detach from their emotions. So um, uh, again, sorry for the generalization, but just to, just to indicate to you that detaching from your emotions is a way to take action more effectively sometimes. So we press our emotions down through contraction. So again, as you begin to expand, if you begin to feel things, that's natural, that's good. Zone six, the chest, the stomach, and the waist. Three, two, one, release. You know, for some people, feelings are bad. I don't want to feel. That's upsetting, understandably. Especially if you're not used to dealing with emotion, if you're a person that's uncomfortable with that. But... On the contraction expansion spectrum, feelings are definitely an expansive thing. Feelings are an expansive thing. If you ever want to get out of a state of a contraction, let your emotions fly and you will expand. Letting loose, letting it happen. Zone seven is down the back and into the pelvis. Three, two, one, release. Now I say pelvis, I just toss that off, but the pelvis is a very complicated area. There's a lot of tensions and constrictions and clenching going on in that area, so it may be particularly sensitive. So be aware that it's okay to feel uncomfortable as you release these muscles. It's natural. We hold them almost instinctively. As we begin to let them go, we may feel as though we're letting down our guard, our defense system. That might feel frightening. That might feel vulnerable. Just move through that. Zone seven, the back down into the pelvis. Three, two, one, release. And again, we're looking for very, very, very subtle changes. The slightest sense of, oh, that's what you want to get good at. That's all this is. That's all scanning is. The incremental release of muscular tension. That means the smallest release has value. Never judge how you're feeling or how it's going in this technique. If you move 1%, it's a victory. If you were here and you move here, that's fine. The reason being is you can't contract and expand at the same time. So if you are expanding, you are not contracting. So you're moving in the right direction. That's all we want to learn to do is move towards expansion. One more time. The back down into the pelvis. Three, two, one. Release. And now see if you can kind of connect all of that up. Everything I've done. The face, the top of the head, the back of the head, the neck, the shoulders, the chest and stomach, the back into the pelvis. Three, two, one. All of them. Three, two, one. Release.
And I'm always surprised, every single time, I'm surprised at the amount of tension I was holding. As I start to release and relax and let go, I go, wow. I was holding so much more tension than I thought I was. I thought I was just sitting here. But now that I've begun to relax and I'm feeling the difference between being expanded and contracted, I'm realizing how much tension I was carrying when in fact I thought I was carrying no tension at all. I started the session thinking I was pretty relaxed. But now as I'm incrementally moving through these isolated zones of my body and building an accumulation of expansion and relaxation, my body is starting to sink more comfortably into the chair. I'm starting to go, wow, <sighs> man. All that, I just got up. How much tension could I have built up? I just got out of bed, you know, 20 minutes ago. Where's all that tension coming from? Well, you can accumulate stress in your sleep. We all know how we feel sometimes we wake up from bad dreams, totally stressed out. In the night, your mind is spinning, your body is reacting to that. You know, one of the reasons you have those dreams where you're trying to run but you can't, where you're trying to scream but you can't, is your body, it's a very intelligent design. When you're sleeping, your body cuts off your mind from your motor uh, skills. So if your mind is thinking, I got to run, I got to scream, your body will be frozen. You'll feel frozen. Why can't I move my legs? It's the body's way of keeping you asleep. So you don't constantly wake yourself up in your sleep. It, it almost, um, what's the word, disables your body. So your body's fighting to move. It's fighting to think, but you're, the mechanism that allows you to sleep is keeping that from happening, but you're making the effort. So you may wake up racked with tension because you were trying. So case in point, I'm feeling much more relaxed than when I first woke up. Strange. Zone eight, the final zone is the legs, down across the knees and into the all-important feet. So just think about your feet for a minute. Focus on your feet. And this is another thing you learn to do through scanning, is focus your tension and concentration on particular, specific areas of the body. You can literally, and you can try this sometime, you can induce a throbbing sensation in almost any part of your body. It's an amazing thing. You can think about your knees. Just focus on your knees and suddenly they will begin to throb. So you can really direct the energy, sometimes a healing energy, into parts of your body. I had a, uh, an injury, a calf injury on a show once and I was sent to a, a network chiropractor, he was called. And he's the one that first showed me about this. And he would touch the area that was injured very, very lightly. And he would say, I want you to concentrate on that area till you feel a throbbing. And I would. He'd touch it. You could touch yourself in any particular area, your knee, your thigh, your arm. And just very, very lightly and focus on that area and try to induce a throbbing sensation and you will begin to feel a throbbing sensation. This is the blood flow increasing to that area, which of course can't help but heal the area more quickly, the injured area. In this case, I had a torn muscle. And I was back up on my feet in a couple of days for an injury which normally would have taken a week through that technique. So practice that. It's fascinating. The things you can do with your body when you decide to take control of your own being. So think about your feet. And try to direct a throbbing sensation into your feet. And then on my count, make a conscious decision to incrementally release a small amount of tension in your feet. Three, two, one, release. Now we won't spend a lot more time on this because this is basically to remind you of these techniques and I hope you now go off and practice on your own anywhere from a half an hour to an hour. But I do want to do the feet one more time. Think about your feet. My feet are throbbing already just from thinking about them. And now I want you to incrementally release the tension in your feet. Three, two, one, release. And imagine your feet are like your hands. You're just going, ah. Oh. And watch for that slight, slight change. That's all we're doing. It doesn't have to be a big change. Just the difference between this and this. So now we've done the eight zones, the eight muscular zones. So it's been just about a half an hour, so we're going to wrap it up. Um, I do these sessions, uh, what I always do, and that's take you through the steps. There's only a handful of steps in this process. They never change. They're always the same. But I think it's useful to uh, review them, to practice them. But my intention for you is that you would now go off on your own and practice daily, several times a day if you like, five minutes, ten minutes, half hour, hour. But just familiarizing yourself with that sense of three, two, one, release. and get better and better at this scanning technique until you can begin to induce this incremental release on demand so that when you find yourselves, simply put, feeling bad or overly contracted, you can expand. That's all we're doing. And just to, to reiterate, if you haven't got a lot of time, any one of these steps will suffice. Any one of these steps I've told you, either in the preliminary phase or the nuts and bolts phase, is effective. Any one of these steps 
Because you know the most important thing about this process is being conscious that you are contracted and that you have the ability to expand. That decision in itself is something effective. We forget that we are in control of our own state of consciousness. So anything that reminds you, that puts the control and the power back in your hands is helpful. Simply to do this, I'm contracted, but I can expand, is enough because it sends a signal to your body that you have the ability to change your state of consciousness and then you can proceed to do it in whatever way you like. Even if it's none of these techniques, if it's going golfing, if it's going for a swim, if it's taking a walk, if it's having a conversation with a friend, anything that changes you from a state of contraction to a state of expansion is helpful. You know, I always end a session with uh, rule number one, I call it. Rule number one of life, love yourself. Because love is the most expansive action you can take in life. That's why charity is so beneficial to our very existence. Because when you give, when you love, it's expansive. It changes your state of consciousness. When you let go of your self-absorbed thoughts and feelings, thinking about your problems, and you think about someone else, you open your consciousness, you expand, that's love, and it opens your, your very state of being. But I always say start by loving yourself because this is where it all begins. This is what you were given for better or worse. And if you can't love yourself, you can't move forward. So love yourself. Find a way to love yourself. If you feel angry at yourself, love yourself for being angry at yourself. You're only trying to help. You're only trying to improve. Love everything about yourself. And when you have so much love in you that it's spilling over, you have extra, pass it around to the rest of us because everyone could use it. So... Thanks for today. I'm going to repost this on my Facebook page for anyone who wants to see the session again who missed any part of it. I also scan it, uh, put it on the scanning Facebook page, S-Q-A-N-N-I-N-G. All my sessions are there, pretty much all of them. And if you uh, follow and like that page, then you can uh, be alerted whenever there's a new session. Feel free to share this post. I like to get the word out. Uh, it's, uh, it's a very sort of expansive action to share. And there's also a YouTube page for scanning. Until then, have yourself a great day. Try to stay calm. There's a lot of contracting going on. A lot of thinking, a lot of worrying, a lot of posting, a lot of tweeting, a lot of arguing, a lot of writing. There's a lot of that going on. Do yourself a favor and balance that contraction with a little bit of expansion every day, one or two times a day. We all deserve to feel good at least one or two times a day. And uh, have yourself a great week. We'll see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.